good day dear student friends myself mr sayed hasan kazi assistant professor mechanical engineering department tondadare college of engineering gadag in this video session let us learn how to solve the problem on this is a simple bar subjected to an axial load using finite element method let us determine the nodal displacements stresses in each element and the support reactions for the bar given in this bar we have two boundary conditions let us have a look here this support here there is a zero boundary condition displacement is zero and at this end the displacement this end may have maximum 0.12 mm because support is provided at a gap how to handle these type of non zero boundary conditions we will have a look in this solution let us proceed to the solution let us discretize this bar into two elements there is node locate node number 1 here load number node number 2 at the load discontinuity node number 3 at this end here we should not locate the node because in fm we should discretize only the structure so we have two elements and three nodes 1 2 3 <laughs> let us generate the stiffness matrices for both the elements elements 1 and 2 stiffness matrix for element 1 k1 is given by as we know for 1d bar the stiffness matrix for element is given by ae by l1 minus 1 minus 1 1 order of the matrix will be 2 cross 2 because for the element having two nodes substituting substituting the values of area inks modulus and the length of the element area given is 250 mm square and inks modulus that is 210 gpa that is 210 in 10 to 3 mega pascal and length of the element given is 150 as here inks modulus area after calculation we will get 35 into 10 raised to 4 stiffness matrix for element 1 10 raised to 4 you keep outside and 35 inside and write the dof numbers 1 2 1 because element 1 it is consisting of two nodes initial node 1 final node 2 now next stiffness matrix for element 2 ae by l area as given 250 angst modulus of the material of the element is same 210 gpa 210 tends to 3 mega pascal and the length of the element 2 that is 150 we got the same result for stiffness matrix for element 2 since the properties are same for the element 2 also so we got 35 into 10 tends to 4 keep the same common outside as in element 1 10 tends to 4 into 35 minus 35 35 35 now write the dof numbers for the element 2 2 3 2 3 as the element 2 having the nodes initial node 2 final node 3 now proceed to generation of global stiffness matrix global stiffness matrix k it can be found out by assembling both the matrices k1 and k2 since uh, the entire bar is made up of two elements having three nodes since there are three unknowns u1 u2 u3 three degrees of freedoms hence the order of the matrix for the global stiffness matrix will be 3 cross 3 hence generate a grid of three rows and three columns now since the numbering we made that is in series 1 2 1 2 3 
in series 1 2 3 element 1 that is 1 2 and element 2 2 3 from this we can easily assemble these two matrices that is what you have to do in this shortcut method if the numbering is continuous like 1 2 3 as here in this case how to assemble both the matrices just highlight the k1 matrix terms into this box 1 2 1 2 next uh, transfer these terms of k2 into this box that is 2 3 2 3 then one common you will get the value that is 35 that is 2 2 2 2 in both the matrices it is available 35 plus 35 you will get 70 and the remaining uh, blank boxes you write 0 this is what the global stiffness matrix we got now you write the overall equilibrium equation ku is equal to f that is global stiffness matrix just now we have found into nodal displacement factor since there are three dofs three unknowns u1 u2 u3 and next uh, point load vector that is f1 f2 f3 f1 is applied load at node 1 since it is not given it is 0 f3 applied load at node 3 there is no load applied f3 you take it as write it as 0 next f2 here i wrote 16 to 10 raised to 3 newton the given force at the node 2 at node 2 the load given is 60 kilo newton and the direction of load is in the same direction of element numbering hence it should be taken as positive that's why at node 2 i wrote plus 16 to 10 raised to 3 newton otherwise it would be negative now using elimination approach we will solve these three equations from the overall equilibrium equation elimination approach says since the boundary conditions are we have u1 is equal to 0 and u3 the maximum displacement the node 3 is having 0 0.12 mm these are the two boundary conditions which are known to us according to elimination approach no need to solve for u1 and u3 just to eliminate the rows and columns like this the first row first column for u1 third row third column for u3 hence remaining only second equation you have we need to solve for u2 value how to solve that just just the second equation you write 10 raised to 4 outside into bracket minus 35 u1 u1 is already 0 then discard it next plus 70 into u2 that i wrote here minus 35 into u3 is minus 35 u3 i wrote here because even though this column is eliminated but u3 this is a non-zero boundary condition you should consider this term also otherwise it will affect the solution minus 35 u3 is equal to that is 60 into 10 raised to 3 now we will solve this uh, equation to get the value of u2 that is uh, 10 raised to 4 we will uh, get here 10 raised to 4 70 u2 minus 35 into u3 is 0 0.12 that is specified value of displacement given is equal to 16 10 raised to 3 that is 6 into 10 raised to 4 now next uh, we will proceed to the next page of the solution to calculate u2 value 
now u2 value here we got after calculation 70 u2 is equal to 6 plus 4.2 we got that is u2 after calculation u2 we got 0.1457 mm that is the displacement the node 2 is having a displacement of 0.1457 mm at the point of application of load so that we got now the displacement values at the nodes 1 2 and 3 at the left support displacement is 0 u1 is 0 at the point of application of load u2 we got 0.1457 mm at node 3 that is at right side uh, there is a uh, the displacement we got that is it is given already specified 0.12 mm because support is provided at a gap of 0.12 mm these three values you got u10 u3 1 0.12 u2 0.1457 mm okay now let us proceed to computation of stresses in each element element 1 stress in element 1 using hooke's law Young's modulus into strain in element 1 Young's modulus is 210 in 10 raised to 3 megapascal into strain in element 1 change in displacement between the two nodes that is final node minus initial node u2 minus u1 divided by l1 u2 we got uh, here uh, e1 is 210 10 raised to 3 u2 0.1457 u2 0.1457 u1 0 and length of the element is 150 and after calculation we got 203.98 approximately equal to 204 and stress in element 1 is 204 newton per mm square that is tensile hence the tensile stress of 204 newton per mm square is induced in the element 1 now we'll proceed to the stress in element 2 stress in element 2 is Young's modulus into strain in element 2 uh, Young's modulus is same 210 10 to 3 into bracket strain in element 2 is change in displacement between the two nodes 2 and 3 final node u3 minus u2 divided by l2 u3 already it is given 0.12 u2 calculated we have cal we have found 0.1457 l2 150 therefore stress in element 2 we got minus 35.98 that is approximately equal to minus 36 newton per mm square hence compressive stress of 36 newton per mm square is induced in element 2 and therefore it is observed that the element 1 is subjected to tensile stress and uh, the element 2 is subjected to compressive stress next to proceed to the calculation of support reactions using elimination approach support reaction r is given by r is equal to ku minus f now since the both the ends are provided with supports node 1 is provided with support and node 3 is provided a support at a gap of 0.12 mm ends calculate the support reactions at nodes 1 and 3 that is r1 and r3 to find r1 refer the equation number one from the overall uh, global equilibrium equation so that is uh, this is in the global equilibrium equation you refer the equation number one for r1 and equation number three for r3 to calculate to for to calculate r1 and r3 using ku minus f now we will proceed to the solution for support reactions now here i have referred the equation number one for r1 equation number one from the equilibrium equation 10 raised to 4 into 35 u1 minus 35 u2 plus u3 minus this is f1 that is 0 so that after calculation we will get r1 as minus 50,995 newton support reaction at node 1 that is approximately equal to 60,000 newton okay now next calculate the support reaction at node 3 that is r3 
that is refer equation number 3 of the overall equilibrium equation 10 raised to 4 common outside 0 u1 minus 35 u2 plus 35 u3 minus 0 that is minus f3 the f3 is 0 take 0 now next after calculation we will get r3 we got minus 8995 newton approximately equal to 9000 newton by adding these two it is support reactions at uh, two supports uh, one and three uh, if you add we will get approximately this is minus 51,000 and minus 9,000 approximately we will get minus 60,000 Newton that is minus 60 kilo Newton uh, since the applied force on the bar is 60 kilo Newton obviously the support reaction must be 60 kilo Newton hence the answer is verified it's correct okay thank you student friends uh, next uh, video session I will explain you about the penalty approach. Uh, thank you. Take care and stay healthy.